Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And just checking to make sure audio and everything are okay. Um, we had a technical difficulty. I don't know what happened, uh, but looks like Steve or Steli has fixed that. So we should, the audio should be okay. Um, bear with me. Okay, great. Eamon says good morning. So great. I'm glad it looks like everybody can hear. And I wanted to give an extra few, few minutes for people to log in since everybody was getting an error message. So um, what we'll do is let's just go on and we'll go over everything anyway. I did post the news stories and also the economic data, but let's go into one of the other screens. Bear with me. Okie dokie, let's take a look. So we're just in the, I like to call it the big six, but it's actually, there's a, um, I usually call it the big eight. We see here, it's just that they have the other two. So when I do a screenshot, if I do all eight, it's too small. So I just, when I do the Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Nvidia, and Facebook, I just call it the big six. And then here's the other two, Tesla, Netflix. So uh, just want to explain that. So I'm showing those and we'll just touch on these real quick. Um, and we'll get, we'll look at the FX, but since we're already here, well, let's look at the daily, just a quick overview, because it's the end of the week. So let's see where we stand. So we did see the, uh, we saw some real good back and forth action yesterday. Um, real good day trading slash scalping in the NASDAQ. Uh, I think S&P kind of moved around too. FX was still relatively quiet. So you can see here with Apple, they kind of push this, this upper level here at the 120 to 121-ish. And then we close a little bit lower. Same thing here with Microsoft dipping back. All these kind of paired back. You see that? Amazon, they kind of opened up a little bit better. Here's Google kind of finishing lower. Uh, if you take a look at NVIDIA, kind of like middle of the road after a pretty good sell-off, we rallied, but we kind of run out of gas. All these are similar. They just kind of ran out of gas. Uh, we'll go in and pull the Tesla over here. Uh, let's reset to the daily. So they even Tesla kind of made above 420, but that's a key level here. This 418, you can see that. And they weren't able to close above it. They ran out of gas. Lots of times when you'll see with momentum, we'll see, but... We already had a pretty good thrashing yesterday. I mean, we kind of dipped and then we even dipped more in Asia trading. So, but as we finish the week, lots of times you'll see this carry over because anybody that was long, they'll probably exit as we go into Friday. But we've already done that yesterday. So it's kind of probably a mixed bag to see how we'll trade today. Uh, I think we might kind of push the upside just a little bit and then maybe kind of pair back. But most of the selling, I would think, has already been done. Not that I don't think that we can't go lower and we did get a sell signal in the 30 minute EMAs and I'll take you there quickly to show what I was referencing. So if you look here, you can see here where this had been in a buy mode this whole time, that's actually should have said sell mode. I don't know why it said sell mode. Kind of do it to make sure that I keep my head on square uh, and not try and jump on the wrong side, but hang on. But you can see we were holding up really well when we were in a buy mode. You see how I was uh, holding here on the slower exponential moving average? I use that. And this is a proprietary number I came up with. Uh, I did see that there's a... Um, uh, what you call a proprietary firm in New York that actually uses the nine exponential moving average. But I came up with these numbers for the 30 minute, literally about eight years ago. And I just kind of was testing around. Actually at the time I was testing around with crude at the time. I trying to find something that would work really well. So you can see here that it really goes really well with the momentum. So we, we got this dip in here and we flip over to the buy and you can see how well it's holding it up. Even when we dip back, it's still in the buy mode. So you still have to respect that. So you want to buy against those dips. And then you can see where we ran out of gas. You see how we had these gravestone dojis here? I actually had a medium legged doji, okay? And then two gravestone dojis. And I was talking about the importance of 11.927. You remember me talking about that, even referencing it with five minute charts. 
But once we, with this broke here, I said, hey, look, as long as it doesn't go above 11 on 27, that's it. And then I said, hey, we're getting into a sell mode and that's what we've done. Now we flip back to a buy mode and we saw the, a pretty good little sell off already. And that's what I'm saying. It's kind of a mixed bag now because you've already had this good dip. You dipped even further, tested, even went lower here in Asia. And then we've kind of come back a little bit. Maybe the upside key is going to be, remember, it's going to be this 11,927. That would be faded unless we can close above it. We'd open up a new door for higher because we're already in a buy mode. But getting above this, you can see, and I re referenced that yesterday. I always go where I come with the resistance and support. I always go with the bodies. You see that? And I said that earlier or in the chat room. That to me, that's just pu uh, put up or shut up time. It's like, hey, it's closing. I got to, you know, either I'm going to be exiting out or whatever. And that's why I always go against the bodies. And you'll find out that the market will really respond to those. I mean, you can use it whatever time frame you use it on, or if you use it on a five minute or whatever. Yesterday, we saw some pretty good movements, you know, and right now we're trading above same day VWAP and we're also trading above two day VWAP. So the momentum's going a little bit its way. There's the 11,927 here. And then what I've done is trying to keep on top of things, even though I have several screens, it's, it's more easy for me just to focus with my, my face and my mug on one screen. And so I'll just have this one minute. And really, I'm just looking for variances in volume. If I see is get up to this level, and then I see a bunch of volume go off, then I'll say, oh, wow, you know what? Well, maybe we're going to go and dip at that point. So that's the way. And then I figured I might as well just throw this here because although I look at the futures, it always helps when I see where the, where the cash Forex is at. It'll kind of tell me, okay, maybe something's happening there. So anyway, enough of that. Let's go and pull up the, um, the economic data. And I did already post this in the room. So we did have a uh, Spanish CPI earlier, basically you see came in line, okay? And then at the top of this next hour, we'll have some uh, Eurozone GDP flash estimates for the quarters. That's pretty interesting. Should be a mover here. And we'll take a look, like I said, the Euro and Cable and Aussie. Uh, we're kind of like flipped around because of the delay that we saw here. You can see here, not, I mean, the volumes jump up a little bit, but that's really nothing when you look at when it's traded in the, in the uh, U.S. session for sure, but you can see it's quite a little bit of a move here, so the market's kind of dance around, but nothing out of the ordinary. You can see right here when the market took off right here, that volume really took off right here, and that gave you an indication that hey, there's some more follow through, and certainly we did. We went and pushed all the way up to this. Wow, we didn't even realize that. Look at that, we got all the way up to eleven nine twenty. Look at that, which is knocking on the door at nine twenty seven. So we'll see what happens there. Bear with me. As we move into the states, we are going to have uh, PPI. We had CPI yesterday, PPI, and then also we're going to get a fresh reading uh, from University of Michigan, and that'll be at 10 a.m. Eastern. So that takes care of that. We'll touch on the news. Uh, Eamon says, can you go over GN? You mean um, Sterling Kiwi, is that correct? GN? I'm sure you do. I don't track that market but I can do a chart on it. But I know that a lot of people in the chat room do like, not a lot, but a few people in the chat room do like to trade the Sterling versus the, uh, the Kiwi, if that's what you're talking about as far as the GN. Uh, but I can certainly take a look at that. Um, let's go and go to the news. Okay, he said yes. Okay, we'll get to that, don't worry. Um, hang on. So will Biden have a strong dollar mantra? Uh, U.S. President like Joe Biden has been uh, warned not to tinker with the dollar standing in world markets. <laughs> what a joke. I mean, he hasn't even started. And this, I'm not going to say, I want to get political, but this person that we had in there, he was slamming the dollar. The guy hasn't even gotten to the office. Like, don't, don't tinker with the dollar when that's what this guy was doing all along. So, I mean, this is laughable. Uh, so he's been warned not to tinker with the dollar standing in world markets, given the uh, part of state of the country's finances. But his new Treasury chief may be equally advised against Biden talking up the currency too much. You know what? I say do whatever the heck you want. The other one did whatever he wanted. I'm saying do whatever the heck you want. I'm good for it. And whatever, wherever the chips fall, wherever they fall is wherever they fall. 
In an open letter to the as yet unknown Treasury Secretary this week, Larry Summers, a former holder of the Harvard professor, said the need for expansionary economic policies meant it would be unwise to appear actively devaluist or indifferent to the dollar. Man, all these people throwing all their all their their two cents in. He hasn't even gotten to office, and then we had this other. I'm not going to say a name, but messing with everything. And now everybody's ready to offer their advice. It's ridiculous. Anyway, favoring a strong dollar based on the strong economy or some seems prudent, Summers wrote, within the councils of administration is your vital role to emphasize that if the United States overexploits the central role of the dollar or the international financial system to pursue parochial objectives, it puts that central no role of risk. Well, Trump didn't worry about it, so why, why should Biden worry about it? Let the chips fall where they fall. Like I told you, honk the submarine horns. Let's send that dollar to 80 or 75. The thrust of the letter via the Washington Peterson Institute for International Commerce was that Biden's team should repair America's multilateral economic relations in forms. Yeah, I know this is really gets me and I'm not going to get too political. Is that now he's supposed to clean up and make up for the last four years. I mean, when this other person was doing everything, all kinds of chicanery and doing whatever he wanted. But anyway, his caution about the dollar, however, was partly a sideswipe uh, side at four years in which Trump, even if it's not the Treasury head, Mnuchin's po- uh, publicly complained about an overly strong dollar, lambasted the Fed for march- uh, not matching easy money policies of other central banks. That's what I'm saying. Look what this guy did for the last four years. And now all of a sudden, he hasn't even been, he hasn't even barely even won the office in a week. And it's already like, oh, let's tell you all the stuff that you need to do to make up for the other guy, whatever. But anyway, perhaps unsurprisingly, Summers advocates an approach taken by himself and his predecessors, Robert Brute Rubin in the 1990s, one that answered every question about the exchange rate. An often repeated phrase will promote more financial stability, a strong dollars in America's interest. So essentially that's what they're saying. But the timing of his concerns about the dollar's valuable reserve currency status is well noted by the markets, who on balance remain bearish on the dollar due to the bloated trade and budget deficits. That's what I'm saying. Everything's a mess from the last four years. I mean, that's not even being political. That's just telling you, tell you, listen, the deficit has exploded. Debt has exploded. So I say bring on and do whatever you want. Give everybody free money, spend everything. But anyway... And some felt his precarious position exaggerated by the pandemic slump and massive government rescue justifies more caution about the strong dollar stability than has been shown for years. Larry Summers' comments, we believe, uh, do serve to illustrate where the risk lies, the head of global market strategy. Well, that's where it is. I I post a story you can read. I'm not going to focus any more on this junk. I mean, it's ridiculous. The guy hasn't even gone office and everybody's telling him what to do to make up for the four years and he's supposed to fix it. You know, I say, forget that stuff. Um, so let's go and get in the analysis. The thing, like I said, just burns me. It's not being political, but I'm just saying the guy trashes everything for four years, and now this guy hasn't even been in, hasn't even won the election, but barely a week, and everybody's telling him, "Oh, you need to do this to make up for the last four years." He doesn't need to do anything. He doesn't need to answer to anybody. So hang on a moment. Let's go on and get into the uh, analysis. Move into that. Hold on. I'm not even joking. That just chaps my rear end. I hadn't read the story. That's what I'm saying. So when I see these, lots of times when I'm posting stuff, I haven't seen it. I mean, I'm reading the news just as I read it. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. I didn't know what it what was going to say. And I'm thinking, what a nerve, you know? One guy trashes everything for four years. And now this other guy, they're telling him what he needs to do to fix everything that the other guy messed up on. Like, forget it. Do whatever you want. Hang on a moment. So let's go on and move into FX. And there's no need going, you know, doing a quick review because, like I said, we've already got started late. Let's just go on and move into the analysis. Um, uh, you know, let's go and move into the other screen. It makes it easier. We found. Man, 
man, that thing really got me, got my dander up, and I'm not even joking. Uh, hang on, let's go and do this here. Actually, you can pull it down here like this, and pull it like this. Okay, let's see what we're going here. So we have moved here on this euro, and really remember we'd actually opened the door for this to potentially even go lower. Actually, we need to update that to the daily. And I thought, you know what, they might end up, end up really trying to sell off, but they actually held up yesterday pretty well, so we've kind of pushed the upper end. But you know what, just like equities, we're not seeing a lot of movement after they've tested the low side, which that's what I'm saying. Today's kind of a mix-around day because those that got forced out have already pr pretty much got – forced out on the downside. So it's not like, it doesn't mean we can't dip, but it probably means that we're not going to turn around and challenge these lows. Although I, I left that 1732 open just in case, but let's go on and move into the analysis. So the euro posted a bullish cloud cover on Thursday. You can see that because you look at the body and you can see it covered more than halfway to the body. That's a bullish cloud cover. Whereas if it had done the opposite, which is go more than halfway, to the downside of the body, then that'd be a bearish dark cloud cover. But anyway, um, you're supposed to bullish cloud cover on Thursday, easing some of the bearishness of the prior three days. As you can see, we had really come unglued over those prior three days. Resistance on Friday will be 1840 with support at 1740. So 1840, 1740. Once again, this is a little bit low, but I said, okay, you know, I'm gonna leave that basically there till Friday, just in case. Uh, but you know what? It did go on. And I guess after this, it, you know, I think what happened, we had had such a good run here. A lot of people got long or got stopped out. Then they got turned around and ended up giving all this. But we'd seen a pretty good fall. So I guess it wasn't unless it was going to totally come unglued. And, you know, the dollar. Good luck with the dollar trying to rally. We know about that. Uh, but uh, so anyway, and on the upside, it is going to be 1840. And um, for Eamon, we will get to the um, sterling Kiwi uh, once we finish the uh, bias chart. So let's go on and move into the cable now. And just to look at the euro, you can see here, we're above the same day VWAP. This is just looking on a five minute, but of course that's the futures, okay? And then look on a 30 minute, you can see it's been in a buy mode. Look, look like it triggered the buy mode here and look, it's held throughout that way. You can pull this back. So it's still in a buy mode here. So let's just go on and move into cable. You can see cable is doing pretty good too. It's been a buy. Actually, no, that's a euro. Huh, I don't know what cable should have been. Oh, maybe it's here. Anyway, we'll let's go and move into the cable. So I'll just look at the futures. So cable closed lower on Thursday, taking out 3151. You see that we did hit taking out 3151. Opening a challenge on Friday to support line of 3053. Potentially we could have gone there, but you can see things have kind of turned around. The dollars pulling back with resistance at 3182. So let's move this here. 3053. So looking here at the Aussie dollar, Thursday, uh, Aussie closed Thursday below key level of 72.42. I have to pull this back a bit here. 
indicating a short-term top is in place. You can see here, we closed below that 72.42, we saw that dip. Resistance on Friday will be 72.86 with support at 71.98. And let's go this. Extend this a little bit further out. There you go. Make it easier. There we go. You can see how we took out that 72.42. We closed below that level. You can see how we've been pushing up in here with a Greystone Doji and another Doji here, Doji. So suggest a short term top in places. Once again, 72.86 will be resistance. Let's go and move into the Kiwi. So the Kiwi posted its first negative day in the last six sessions. Obviously, we're lower here today right now. Um, weekly level of 68.96 has loomed. We talked about that 68.96. I think we moved up to 68.98, but 68.96 is a weekly level. And you can see we've closed. Now we're well below that now. Resistance on Friday will be 66.81. We supported 67.97. So this at 68.87. 96 is a key weekly level. We showed that a couple of days ago, and you can see we did get above 69, but we couldn't, even the day that they did get above 69, because they didn't hear that might have gone by one pip, they couldn't hold it. Look where they ended up falling back. When we're here, we were like somewhere here, and look how they closed down here. And this is a dark cloud cover. You see that? The body engulf us, does engulf, but it, it goes more than halfway. That's a dark cloud cover, which would suggest a lower move. And so you get it right there. So uh, support will be 67.97 with resistance at 66.81. I'm going to say 68.81. But remember that weekly level has held up really well, despite what the because it's a weekly close level. So despite what it does here, all that matters is as on Friday where are we at, and you can see we're we're quite well below that sixty eight ninety six weekly level. So that being said, let's go on and move into the dollar can. This was a very nice rebound um, uh, yesterday in the dollar CAD. So the dollar CAD saw a strong close on Thursday, confirming a short-term bottom is in place. Resistance on Friday will be 3209. That's a bit of a stretch in case, but you can see the dollar's kind of giving back its gains. It's probably actually holding up a little bit better than expected considering how the dollar's doing. But anyway, um, resistance on Friday will be 3209 with support at 3098. So a little bit of a wide range here we have. And 32.09. And this is still bearish. We'll have to get, look, this is bearish. I don't care what you're looking at. This is bearish. And it's still going to remain bearish. Now we're going to need, look, to confirm, look, this pretty much says we had a hammer here, which we shared that. You want to look at the dailies. And this suggested, hey, we might have a bottom in place. This close here suggests that, which I said here, confirms a short-term bottom. Doesn't mean we're taking off to Venus, but this thing is still bearish as all get out. We really would have to get above, you see this level here, which is probably like 32, 40. We'd have to see at least two consecutive closes above that to, to say, okay, it might be getting bullish. And really technically, we need to get above 32.68. Two consecutive closes, then you could say, okay, it's bearish. It's bullish, so it's still bearish. Despite the run up, 
this thing is still bearish. Um, let's take a look now at dollar peso. So the dollar peso was able to close at resistance level of 2062, suggesting a downslide may, may be stalled for now. Resistance on Friday will be 2068 with support at 2046. Now it looks like we may have made it close to that 2068, maybe a little bit higher, but anyway, there it is. So it's gonna be on the downside, 2046 today, upside 2068, still remains bearish. Let's now go and move into the dollar uh, yen. So the dollar yen rallied to the bias chart resistance topping at 556, um, 566, closing slightly higher for the day. Resistance will be five. I think that was yesterday. So it kind of ticks me off because I don't think that because we had closed. Remember, we did close up there to five, six. So yesterday, I don't know why it didn't save it. So based on this one, we would have still left it. Let me see. We would have gone here with that with that top, which would have been 563. I don't know why it didn't save it. I'm not going to bother with going to look it up. Again, 563. And the downside would have been the bodies here. You see that body right there? That would have been the downside, which is 487. To be honest with you, well, that, that's where it's holding. I probably would have gone with the wick here, which I guess that would have been it anyway, which would have been, let's go with that, which is probably what I would have gone with, which is 493. So we'll go with mark 493. We did get lower, but you can see where they're finding support here. You see the bodies, and what you do is if they're close, check the lower body, because then you're going to get the most volume. So that lower body actually comes in right there at 483, and the low for the bar here was 484. You see? So go with the bodies. Although from here, everything still looked relatively bullish, although... You see, I, I don't know what happened with this because it closed here. So, yeah, on this close here, I definitely would have moved it down here. would have gone with this one. I would have actually gone with the body. So that's actually be lower. And it already fallen quite a bit, so I might have just gone probably uh, would have called the between the two. So it had been like that body is 486. This body is 481. So I probably would just said 484, something like that. But anyway, we'll leave it as is. But that's how I build up. That's how I, I come up with these resistance levels. Like if you're thinking, well, he just said it's where did he come up with that? Well, that's how I pull it up because, like I said, I don't know why it didn't save the the dollar yen. So, but the the dollar itself didn't really go anywhere. So we'll take a look at the dollar. The dollar held steady on the close on Thursday at 93 even. Resistance on Friday will remain 93.24 and support will be 92.67. So we go here 92.6. So no changes. You see here. And you can see here, we just did a whole lot of nothing. See that? Close right at 93. So the 24 is still going to hold. And you can see we're just dead in the water. Look at that. That's what I'm saying. I don't think the euro is going to go anywhere because whatever's been done has already been done. And also a lot of the equities have already sucked. So they're sold off. So that's why you're seeing equities kind of push a little bit higher on a rebound. So whoever got knocked out of the box, already got knocked out of the box. There's no, if we were tipping and we were on our way down, then you'd be saying, wow, it's Friday. You can have a lot of pressure. People are going to be forced out of positions. We've been rallying. So, I mean, and you can see here, FX has been kind of, for certain pairs, kind of dead this week anyway. So with that, let's go into the cross rates. This has been a pretty good mover, this Kiwi Yen. Let's go into the daily. So yesterday, you can see here, I don't know why that's there. I don't think I can get rid of it. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Nope, I better not mess with it. Um. 
So anyway, yesterday we had 72.78. And you can see we actually made it up to 72.76. So that was pretty good. Um, but you can see here now, this is a bearish engulfing bar. Some people do the whole wicks. You don't have to do the whole wick. I, like I said, I guess it depends on how you look at it. But to me, it's the body that counts, not necessarily the wicks. Now, if we get a real long day, like what we call like a, um, a, a, a long-legged doji, where you, you know, you... Um, you have a big long wick and it finishes in the middle. Yeah, that means something. But I'm saying in this capacity, they're pretty much close. Look, it's a bearish engulfing bar. It doesn't have to engulf the entire wick of the whole thing. That's bananas. As long as it engulfs the, and the body was pretty wide, that's a bearish engulfing bar. Like I said, it, it opened above it. It closed below it. Bearish engulfing bar. Boom. We went lower. So what would be support? Where I would end up picking support then for today, we'd say like, oh, it's probably the 7140. Well, I would think they probably goose some stops. So I take the closest body below that. You see right there, right there, 7134. They could go beyond that, but 7134 for support. And resistance, well, it's on its way down. So here's the key resistance. You see the body close from the previous day? That You have some confluence here with this body close and that body close. So choose a higher one. And it's right there at 71.86. So that's the resistance, 71.86. So I try to point it out because, like you said, I do the analysis for the majors every day. And so... You know, I'll say, okay, it's 1840. It's just saying, like, where's he coming up with those levels? That's how I'm factoring it. So I look at, okay, how was the previous day? Where can it go to? Are there some bodies it can go to? Is there a key level? Sometimes I will just say, hey, it's going to be a key level. But don't forget, the momentum is pushing, and we had a very strong day. So will we see further momentum? Yeah, more likely. And also the end of the week. So really, when you factor in the week, you're thinking anybody that's long, they're stuck like Chuck. They may be forced out. So Technically, I'm putting it here, but don't be surprised if we broke this 71.40 into Friday, you would be heading to the, the top of these wicks. That would be your support, which would be 71.16 if the market gets a little bit carried away. So let's now go into the euro pound. Okay, so... Pretty good rally back up here. This thing's like a heckle and jack, not a heckle and jekyll, but um, hiding whatever. You know what I'm saying? I think about those two cartoon characters, the birds, the heckle and jekyll. But anyway, jekyll and Hyde is what they meant to say. But anyway, so you saw a pretty good turnaround here, and we've even jumped past. Look, we even had look. We now here's the time where you see we just went with the levels. Remember that yesterday I said, okay, we'll just go with the levels. That and that's a situation you can go with the levels. Today we've seen. A reversal, how much further they can push. So when I look at where's the closest body, we've already saw a pretty good rally. I don't know how much further they're going to take it because once again, anybody was short, they've already been knocked out of the box because they would have been knocked out of the box around 89.68, a little bit higher. So I look somewhere in the middle, I'll go with that body closed. And not bad because it kind of confluences with these wicks. So that'll be the resistance, 90.11. And we're support. I don't think we're going to turn because anybody who's stuck, they're going to use any dips to get out. So let's go with this body. Because if we do test the stops, they'll be quick to buy it back. So that body close is 89.55. And let's go to Euro Odd. So we saw a pretty good, pretty good rally here. Uh, you can see where they ran out of gas at the 63.17, that level. That wasn't our resistance. Our resistance was 62.81. But you can see there, I mean, they got a little bit above it, but they closed right there at that 63.17. But that that held the market in check. So could they goose some more stops? Yeah, possibly. So let's go with this body, which actually confluences with this top wick here. So that would be 
6348. And for support, if we pair back, I don't think we'd make it all the way back down here. We could. I would go with this wick right here. You see that? That'd be just above there. Some nice confluence. So let's go with 6283. Then go to Euro Kiwi. And so when we do the bias chart, it's set up for, as you can see, resistance and support for the next, essentially for the next 36 hours, essentially for today and then roll a little bit to tomorrow. Well, there's no tomorrow because tomorrow's Saturday, but it's just short-term support resistance that you can use in conjunction with your own analysis and say, okay, that's what he thinks. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the top or the bottom, but that's where I expect volume to come in on either side. So we saw a pretty good turnaround here. You can see this is a bullish cloud. Uh, and actually the body's a little bit high, so it's not perfect. But you can see we see some follow through momentum. So I would just go with this wick down here because it's already had a pretty good run. I don't think the mail will make it all the way up to 74.43. We might over the next few days, but for immediate, that's about as probably as good as it gets. That's why I would say some people to step in and exit or take the other side short term. So it's going to be 73.64. I don't think they'd necessarily take the other side on a Friday, but if anybody was long, they would use that level to get out of the longs or some of the longs. So uh, 73.64. And support, let's just go with this wick down here. Keep it simple. 72.50. Onto the Aussie end. Well, you can see where they found support. See that key level right there? Uh, but that took out from where we saw. It even fell further than what we thought. You see here, we had 76.11, but you can see they went right to that level. Uh, we did get a bounce back, so you got some short covering. This one, I wouldn't say it's tricky, but I don't know if it's going to move that much higher, but this would be the resistance. You see that wick there? Any moves to that, they'll lay off. So 76.23. And support, we'll just go with the 75.72. On to the guppy. Uh, NASDAQ still moving higher, by the way. We can take a look at that when we look at also the, the starting Kiwi for, um, for Amon. Uh, Oh, Giuseppe says, thanks. Have a good day. So I think Giuseppe's going to step out. So thank you, Giuseppe. Um, looking at the daily here on the guppy. Well, this one's really had quite the run. Look at this. Wow. What a turnaround. And you see where they would have been support right there. You see here? And we'll go with that body touch. And they almost made it there, which is 37.45. But this has been all over the map. And you get situations like that, just go with the levels. Because at least you know, like, that – at least you say, like, well, this is where I think they could go. And it gives you an idea. I mean, instead of just trying to figure out, just straight up go with the levels and the bodies right there. Um, on the upside, I don't know how much further it's going to bounce up. So, And I don't see any bodies here. And I really don't believe it's going to bounce all the way up here. So then let's take a look at the two-hour chart and see if there's something in between before 39. So we get to 39 and look, okay, we'll go with that width there, which is 38.69. And let's go to Stony Nod. Hmm. 
hmm, we've extended this, but we haven't gone bananas or anything like that. Uh, keeping it simple, just use the prior day's high right there, which is going to be 81.91. And support, just go with the body right there from yesterday. See right there, the open, 81.45. And Eamon wanted to take a look at the um, Sterling Kiwi. So that's a market I don't ever look at, but we can see what it looks like. I know some of y'all trade it. So, well, I wouldn't really call that a hammer, but you can see that, um, let's see, we had some support came in right there. That actually held. So let's go here. See, going with the bodies. Notice I'm not going with the wicks. I'm going with the bodies. And look what, that's where they found support. You see that? And then, uh, hmm. And I'm sure you're not looking at it from a day trade standpoint. What the heck? I'll have to, get that I'll have to correct this later. Um, let's take a look at a weekly. Doggone. Yeah. Mm, let's say the high. Let's see if we can correct that. Uh, We go. Mm, this is pretty good key weekly support here. Overall, although it's all over the place. And nice rebound on the weekly so far. You see this week close here. Right there. That's 93.89. Now let's look at the daily. You'd go with these bodies. See that body right there? That's 93.13, and we just said 93. So 93.13, and that's actually the high for the day is 93. Oh, 93.13. So you can see, I mean, if you're looking at it for today, it'd be 93.13, but we're pretty oversold. I don't think we're going to take off, but potentially we can come back here. And the next key area for the market to go to, if we're going to put in, if they're putting in a low, it's going to be right there. You see these bodies right there? See how that confluence is there? So if we do put a low and you're looking, you bought it and you're saying, I'm going to keep hanging on. I think it's really overdone. That'll be your first key resistance right there, which is 94.40. 94.40 would be your first key level right there. The market is pretty oversold. Uh, we are into some weekly support there in this area. You can see this comes all the way back to here. So that's good weekly support. We are rebounding, pretty oversold. I would look for this market uh, if you're going to hang on to it for a while. Um, your first stop is going to be right there at 94.41. And then the next key would be right there, the body touch, 95.74. And then you can see this one's huge here. That's coming across the court, right across all these touches here, which would be a move. I don't think we'd make it all the way up there, but I'd go with that. You see here, I'll show you. There, you see that body right there? I'd go with. It's really like right there. You see there? Because you see how the market comes down 
and can, and sits here and it, it's a launching pad to go up here and on the way down and see where to find support here. And then when it breaks, you see how they're hanging here? Then look how they revisit it here, but they can't go beyond it. They revisit it. That's going to be the next, that's your next key true level resistance, which would be 96.67. So I hope that answers it for you there. Um, There we go. Okay, and then we'll we'll just quickly just um, so we're done, and all we're gonna do is um, move down to and Q real quick, and you can see how we've moved up in here. Oh wow, look. We're challenging 927. I didn't even notice that. I mean, I saw it here, but I mean, I didn't even notice that. You see, so we're challenging 927 on the 30 minute. This will be key if we can close above there. Well, I didn't even expect that. I just need to remove that. I don't need that here. And also, another thing is we flip to a buy mode. And here's one of the things, although this took a little bit longer, but one of the key things I do notice, let me see here if we have anything like that. I'll show you. Well, you saw it here too. Look, let me show you something. Whenever you flip to a, 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 a the other direction, but it doesn't last long, and you flip back, usually you see an extended move. And I'll tell you the reason why. So people say, wow, I'm getting short. I'm going to really make a ton of money. We're really going to, I mean, we're probably going to, I mean, look how far it's gone. We're probably going to at least come down to here. At least there, 11, probably 11,550 11, is probably at least we're going to do. So what happens is the people that get short here, they're like, all right. And then when it flips back, they end up getting stopped out here and here. And that's what I'm saying, you get an extended move. So right now, you see how the market was in a nice buy mode? You see here? Look, from here, look how it rode it all the way. So it's like, wow, this thing is probably going to go down here to 11,640. And then look, we do take a dip and it flips back. Generally, you see a pretty good move. Now it's Friday and you can see here, see how it closed right there at 11,927? So we'll see what happens. If it closes above 11,927, that's going to be pretty key. It's going to open the door for him to push for the stops. But if you're, if you were short this market, Blake, let's say that's true. Put yourself in the other guy's or other guy's shoes and you say, wow, if I'm short, Man, I definitely don't want to see this market close above 11,927. And so we close right there on the dot. And we're going to see what happens. So if you're saying, wow, should I be buying? I would, your better bet would be if you were aggressive, you could say, I'll take a short against that level. And we may dip back, but your better bet would be wait till the next 30 minutes. Because if we do fail, if you want to be, be a bit more aggressive, you could sell against that and say, wow, I'll just, I'll just have my stop. And if it closes in the next 30 minutes above 927, I've got to get out. But if you if we do close like above 927, then you know you're going to have further momentum to go higher. Okay, so that's where we're at. Anyway, that's it for the day. Thanks for joining us here at the European Crossover Webinar, and we'll see you next week, and we'll see you in the chat room.